Hello everyone, this is Jana Smokula and welcome to another alt new video tutorial. I'd like to encourage you to watercolor outside the lines today. Here I have magnolias for her stamp set along with matching dyes. I've been wanting to get my hands on these for quite some time now and I'm going to use these to create a rather simple card with watercolored flowers. I've already laid out the stamps I want to use onto a card base created out of spicy yogurt cardstock from Altnew, and I also have one of their gorgeous antique trims in gold under the flowers. Now there are a lot of watercolor video tutorials out there, a lot on Altnew channel as well. What I'm going to show you in this particular video is not to be afraid to go outside the lines and color outside the lines of your images. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start by heat embossing the selected images onto watercolor paper. This is Arches cold press watercolor paper. I'm treating it with an anti-static powder tool to keep my embossing clean. And I'm going to go ahead and just stamp all of the images in clear sticky ink. I'm using clear blocks from Alt New, by the way. This is a new product. These are nice and thick and they have grid lines that are etched into them, which is a very useful when stamping patterns or sentiments or something that you need to be stamped straight. I'm using grass embossing powder today and I'm going to go ahead and heat set all of the images with my heat tool to melt the powder. I'm going to be using Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolor Sampler Sheet to watercolor my images. This sampler has four sheets with close to 300 different colors and I have to say that I really like the quality of the pigments in there and the variety of the colors. And there is a lot of pigment in each of those dots. Maybe not a lot for watercolor artists, but definitely plenty for a card maker to get the feel of the paints and decide on favorite colors. I'm first going to go ahead and lay a layer of clean, clear water over my flowers. Arches paper takes a lot of water, so don't be afraid or alarmed to add a heavy layer of water onto your paper. We're going to be doing a wet on wet technique, so it's important to wet your paper first. If we are to color only inside the lines, we would have added water inside the heat embossed areas. But because I want the color to seep outside the embossing, I'm adding water almost to the entire surface of the paper. Now my water isn't perfectly clean, it's kind of orangish, so you can kind of see where I've added it to the paper and it's, you know, it's not a problem for this case that it isn't clean, it's okay. I'm going to use several colors and we'll mix them directly on the wet paper. First I'm adding lots of yellow, creating a few lighter and darker spots, and then I'm adding pink to the other side of the flower. I really love how yellow and pink mix together, giving those fabulous peach and orangey colors. I'm making sure to mix the colors in the center of the flower to create a soft transition from one color to the other. I'm also adding color outside the lines. I'm not staying within the lines of my heat embossing and I think that this gives a nice twist to this image. To speed up the drying time, I'm using my heat tool and drying this piece. Now I'm using a detail brush and intensifying the colors at the base of the petals. I'm then coming in with a large wet brush and adding water to help the color move. And once again, drying this with my heat tool. I'm going to repeat this several times until I have the desired look on my flowers and then I will move on to coloring the flower buds and the leaves. So I'm doing the exact same thing here. I'm adding water to the paper first and then adding pigment to color my images. This is a fun and simple way to watercolor. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's quite relaxing and very fun, I have to say. And the fact that there's color outside the heat embossed lines makes these images that much more unique. Once my images have been colored and once they are dry, I'm going to use matching dyes and die cut these out. Now there isn't a die for one of the leaves in this die set, so I'm going to cut it out with my scissors, it's not a big deal. The next step is to trim the gold element that I selected for my card and I've placed it at an angle at the base of my card base and I'm going to trim it with my scissors and then foam mount it onto the card. I love using these antique trims from Altnew and I have a lot of cards with them. They can take a simple card and make it into a wow project in no time. Now before I adhere the main flower, I'm going to add physical dimension to the petals by shaping them with my fingers. I always do this as I feel it makes my flowers look a bit more realistic and appealing. To adhere the flower, I'm going to use foam adhesive and then tuck the little flower buds and the leaves behind it forming a floral cluster. Some of the images are adhered using foam adhesive and others are adhered using glue. 
For the sentiment, I'm going to hit emboss a simple thank you. This message comes from the same Magnolias for Her stamp set, and I'm using the same brass embossing pattern. And to keep things cohesive, I'm also using the same spicy yogurt cardstock for the sentiment. I've been enjoying using this particular cardstock for my clean and simple cards lately, as it fills the background void on simple cards very easily with all of that little printed texture. I foam mounted the sentiment over the flower and I'm going to also add a few sunshine glow sequins from Pretty Pink Posh and top them with a clear drop. And that finishes this clean and simple card with watercoloring outside the lines. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I hope you'll give this type of watercoloring a try. Thanks, I'll see you next time, bye!